I remember being a kid. I can see that happening. That's oh, always, always something to do. The Unlaced. Unlaced podcast. It's actually not bad. <laughs> and we're live. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Unlaced podcast. Bit of a bloody weird setting today, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I feel uncomfortable or I'm excited about this, but I'm in a podcast booth at a burger joint, Royal Stacks AU, and I'm sitting across from Dane Swan. So it doesn't get much more unique than this. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> you might be claustrophobic. Right now, <laughs> no, it is um, tight. It is tight. But quickly, just a quick shout out to Royal Stacks for having us. Yeah. It's a new opening of their venue in Moorabbin. They've got two already that are booming. We're going to try some of their burgers. You said you haven't had any before, have you? No, no, I haven't. Um, I'll go anywhere for a fee for <laughs> yeah, so, um, exactly. Here I am. Yeah, stuck in a booth with you. So fuck it. Let's yeah, go. let's do it. Yeah. Um, how you been anyway, man? Lockdown, everything. How's life? Um, shit, that's a can be a long-winded oh. answer. I don't know how long do you want me answers to be? Yeah. Uh, yeah I, how am I going? How have I been? I've been good. Um, how am I going? Okay. Uh, yeah, just just ticking along. Um, lockdown suck a lot. Yeah. Everything, and especially most of my work or businesses is in front of people or in hospitality with the bar, tattoo shops and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, listen, it wasn't great, but... Well, listen, there was people going worse than me and people going better. So yeah. we're okay. We had a baby in that time. So <laughs> hey, What uh, the hell was that like? Lockdown and then bang, fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, wild, 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 wild. But um, he took up, it was probably the right time to have, have one, to be honest. True. Um, because I wouldn't have been able to do anything anyway because I had a, yeah. a baby. So, yeah. well, I didn't have him. It would have been a miracle if my partner had him, but... Um, yeah, so that obviously w was great. So he's he's nine months old. So you know she was pregnant, what nine months before that? Yeah, so eighteen yeah. months ago. Was um, that before the first lockdown? She would have got pregnant. No, no so eight, eighteen months ago. So figure that out. Was that June? Yeah. So just June, as we went in the June, first one. Yeah, probably. yeah. It's just after four months. Yeah. So June just after that. So um, that was probably come at the right time to be honest, because I don't know what I would have done um, if we. Didn't have that to look forward to. So that, that's been good. It's been great. He's he's overseas with his mum now. Um, that's awesome. Little bastard gets away <laughs> yeah. before I do. I don't know. Um, yeah. He's got two passports. He gets to travel the world <laughs> before I do. <laughs> Arsehole. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Now, you've got your... We spoke off air, but you've got your own podcast, which I wanted to plug. Swanee and yeah. Friends, mate. How long has that been around for? For uh, a few years. We got... They tried to cancel us the first the first time when we asked <laughs> for the I recall, I yeah, recall so, that. Um, he left, uh, <laughs> and it kept the podcast. My unpopular demand, but um, but yeah. So then me and Ralph. Well, I think the thing was with Scotty. He actually um, had he was employed by people. Where Ralph does his own racing thing, okay. and I'm sort of everything I do. I'm sort of own myself, or I'm a, and a right. partner in it. So I couldn't be sacked from anywhere, <laughs> and Ralph couldn't be sacked from anywhere. So Camo was the low hanging fruit. So they went after him. <laughs> so we were like unsackable. Yeah, well. Basically, yeah, because unless, yeah, that's probably the answer because I don't have a, a boss technically, so um, I could sort of do as I please. But, um, yeah, they try to come after us. We were like, me and Ralph decided, fuck it, we'll keep going. And, yeah, so so we're still going. We're going, okay, listen, you're not going to get any smarter by listening <laughs> to our podcast. You might Likewise, get, you, might get, you might get a couple of laughs. But, um, mind you, the last couple of weeks we interviewed Ed and uh, Brendan Gale, so... Um, That's big hitters. A bit highbrow for us. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I don't know where we're trying to go. I don't know where Ralph's trying to go with that, but, um, yeah, but it's been fun to talk to some smart people instead of us three idiots in a room. I've tried to bring you back down to earth by Thanks, bringing mate. you to yeah, the yeah. burger booth here. Yeah, at Royal Stack, yeah, so... I, was, I, fit, I feel home. I feel <laughs> home. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things I've always loved about you, and we're going to go into your AFL career and all you've achieved, but, like, for me... I love players when they're doing interviews and their charisma around the club when they're completely themselves. And you had like a very dry sense of humour. You didn't really move to say the corporate AFL culture. Like yeah. it was just the way you were. Was there any sort of, did you just not really give a shit about that stuff? Um, or was it just? Yeah. But, yeah. Well, one, I don't <laughs> give a shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think maybe subconsciously. So I love the NBA and my favourite of basketball is Alan Iverson. Yeah. So maybe I got a little bit of that just sticking true to yourself. I mean, he was always himself. He didn't, he didn't change his language. Like he, the NBA brought a dress code in because of the way he used to dress yeah, and stuff right. like the gang tattoos and like the way he dressed and stuff like that. So maybe subconsciously it was a little bit of that, but just the 
long and short of it is I just never wanted to change myself for someone else. I was always going to be myself for good, bad or indifferent and sometimes got me in trouble, sometimes it's worked. Maybe whether you think I've got a high profile or not or where you think I you like the way I am today, it's got me here today and yeah. I've gone okay after footy. So um, playing at the biggest club in the land helps. If I played at North Melbourne or St Kilda <laughs> or some of that, would I have the profile I have today? No Probably. disrespect. Yeah, no disrespect, <laughs> but it's just a fact. Playing in front of yeah, 90, 80,000 everywhere instead of 30,000, being the biggest club and when you fuck up, you're on the front page. 100%. When you, you, know, when you play well, you're on the back page. So compared to some other smaller clubs where it might be four or five pages in. So, mm. um, so yeah, that... Um, I've always just wanted to stay true to myself and I've always been me. I talk the same, whether I'm talking to you or I was talking to the Queen. Yeah. Um, I've always dressed the way I wanted to dress. It's kind of worked in your favour though a little bit too. Yeah, people well, love that. Like, Yeah, well, it's, that's what some people would love it. Some people yeah. wouldn't. And, and that's the other thing. I've, I don't go around worrying about the people that don't love me. Yeah, cl- clearly I would love, like to be loved by everyone. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, of course. But like, I don't spend one second of my day thinking, oh, well, can I change the people's opinion that, that don't like me or don't, you know, what's the point? Because yeah. uh, there's no one in the world that's, you know, I don't know who the most loved person in the world is, but you'd even find people who yeah, don't like them. So can't win. so I've always just tried to stay true to myself for, for good or for bad, and, and it's got me sitting in a podcast booth <laughs> with you I and a burger joint I today, actually so feel on it. When you said yes to this, I'm like, there's no way he's coming to the burger well, joint in a podcast booth. But I, I thought it was a piss take at the start because... <laughs> I love that. Because, ha- so I think Harlan's yeah, uncle, ha- so yeah. my mate and business partner in, in the clothing label, um, he messaged me, he called me Dwayne. <laughs> so I don't know whether he thought the W and the he Y. He said to me, Dwayne is on, like it's it's Dane, yeah, right? so I thought, I don't know whether he thought the W and the Y was silent in my name or something <laughs> like that, so I was called Dane. So I brushed it, and then he voice me, I was like, hey, Dwayne, I was like, fuck, this is a piss take, surely. So yeah. I screenshot the thing to Harlan and go, mate, do you have an uncle named, is it Frank or something? Pete, Pete, Pete. Pete. So like, do you have an uncle named Pete? Because I'm pretty sure someone's taking a piss here. And he remember goes, nah, it is. I said, well, rule one of trying to get a guest on a podcast, yeah, call, him by the, call him by the We've right We've got name. to work on that with Pete. So Pete, and, and I hope you're listening, Pete, because Morgan Mitchell <coughs> came into the studio three, four weeks ago and he greeted her. I said, Pete, can you go downstairs, bring Morgan up? Yeah. He greeted her as Jane. <laughs> I said, well, Dwayne, Jane, Jane's a bit different yeah, to Morgan than I Dwayne is to Dane. <laughs> I'm like, first off, I'm like the, the least lookalike of a Jane I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. And so he's done it again. We're yeah. going to have to get him off that. Yeah. Like, so I was like, I was a pissed. I thought, is this, and then I was like, how is he actually your uncle or is this some lunatic <laughs> just <laughs> messaging me for some random podcast? Oh, and go, nah, it's real. I said, okay, well, mate, no, we, for you. we appreciate you coming That's on. Right. And, and back to the comment of Alan Iverson, that um, talking about practice interviews, probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, we're sitting here talking about practice, and I wasn't a big practice. I wasn't a big practice. <laughs> I'm no. going to go into that okay. because I want to. I do want to ask you about that. But before we get into your time in the AFL, like obviously, when you look back in your career, you pretty much did everything you could do. <laughs> Going into the AFL, what was sort of the expectation around you? Like, did people think oh, you very low? Yeah. But what What was that like? Um, oh well, it was. Well, I don't know if it was like anything because I never, I never expected to play AFL and. I don't know how long this podcast goes for, but the story goes for quite a while. Mate, we've got 45 you, you minutes. Can, um, you can buy the book and read all about it. <laughs> hey, there we go. Book. But um, What's it called? My story. Very clever, isn't it? My t- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simple, um, simple man. To, I'm, a very, I'm a very simple man. <laughs> um, mate, but I, I never wanted to play AFL, nor did I want to be drafted. Um, really? No, I had no interest. And I think maybe because, you know, nowadays all, all the gun juniors and all the stars were always told they're going to play AFL. And I was never... Good during the first best and fairest ever one was a, in 2008 at Collingwood. So I was never one of the top elite juniors. So I was never told this is a path for you to go to NFL. So I was just, I played footy for why everyone else does. For the love of you, play with your mates. It's, our, it's a great game. You know, all the reasons why and all the kids play footy. Yeah. And I was no different. And then, you know, managed to get onto the Cannons list, the Calder Cannons in the Tech Cup as a 17 year old. And, I played the first few games, didn't really get a kick and um, got dropped halfway through the year. I got drafted. So for having a poor attitude, which may surprise some, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> well, uh, and not really getting a kick. So my average in that season, in the regular season, about 12, 13 touches a game, maybe kicking a goal. How old are you at this point? 17. So 17. I got drafted as a 17-year-old. Yeah. And then in the three finals, we ended up winning the flag. We are a very good side, obviously. The best sides, we won it. 
Um, I averaged over 30 and kicked 10 goals in the three finals. Wow. You know, so fuck knows how I did that. Big moments. But, well, <laughs> I just say maybe I was just waiting for the MCG. <laughs> yeah. they, these, are, these were back then you played curtain raises. So we played grand fi- AFL grand final day, preliminary uh, final day. Right. And Before whatever, the games. Whatever. Yeah, so that's – which was great for a 17-year-old, you know, playing yeah. in front. And, you know, the crowd wasn't fully formed there, but running out in the MCG was awesome. So I like to tell myself I was just waiting for the big stage to showcase my skills. So yeah. – um, so to get back to your question, yeah, there was no um, level of, I guess, excitement or um, anything that that I was going to get drafted. Or I man, I was on schoolies when I got drafted. Uh, was it? Was it? Did you turn? Some, did you? I don't know if this is a story about you, but did you call them and say, "No, you're going to schoolies or something"? Oh, some, cl- s- close, something like close enough. They called. I was already up there, and uh, okay, and obviously. I don't know if if you've still been to schoolies. It's a it's a very good time, <laughs> and um, obviously I was only going to school once. I was only yeah. finishing once. Even um, I s- actually, to be fair, I, I still go to schoolies. I think um, I'm a toolie <laughs> now. So yeah, it's been <laughs> oh, 20 years in a row. So we love that. It's fantastic. But um, but yeah, so I was on schoolies, and um, they they rang me and said congratulations on, on being drafted. And because I didn't think I'd be drafted, I mean I wasn't missing it on schoolies. Um, and you have to plan it along. Obviously, you have to plan schoolies a fair way out. So I started planning in about year eight. I think it was, about, <laughs> was the only reason why I finished school. So yeah. um, I was at school. And then they basically rang me on the Sunday night, drafted on the Sunday, and I was meant to be over there for a week. And they said, mate, congrats on being drafted. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, we know you're up on the Gold Coast with your mates. Um, we've booked your flight home tomorrow. Oh, no. Now, um, How many you, days in was this? No, this was the first day. So, oh, so yeah. mate, I've, let me tell you, um, I booked a – so I was meant to come next Saturday and – Schoolies is a very good time, and for all the seventeen-year-olds who are listening to this, I plan on going to schoolies. I can guarantee you, once all the girls find out you've been drafted, your stock <laughs> fucking dramatically, dramatically improves. Oh, we love this! So I was like, "Fuck that! I'm not coming home." So, uh, but it, in the end, being the professional athlete I'd been, I, I, I was for four hours. They wanted me home the Saturday. No, I was meant to come home the Saturday. Uh, they wanted me home the Monday. Being the selfless putting the team's needs ahead of myself. I, we decided to compromise and I decided to come home the Friday afternoon. Oh, my God. That's one of the greatest stories ever. There's a lot more depth to what I was told about that. So yeah, there's a lot more to it, but I think so you got some more questions. Now, so you, we'll now you're on a bit on. of a mentorship program for schoolies, which is the sound of it. Um, yeah. They need some guidance up there for sure. Yeah, your last client with teammate. On <laughs> your last client will play on this podcast. Yeah, it didn't go well. Some, so. yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's right. Um, do you know, I do know a lot about you, Swanee, but one of the things that surprised me, because you did – so first off, before I go into that, getting drafted at 17, was that more normal back then? Uh, yeah, can you not get drafted at 17? Well, now? so is, I just assumed it's 18. So were you 17 going 18? Were you in that? No, I was, in so I, I was, so I got drafted in what, November and I was, I turned 18 in the year after. In February, oh, okay. So, so it was normal. Yeah, well, I actually don't know. You know I think you were younger than most. That's why. Yeah, I, I, yeah, was. I was. I was, yeah. I was at the bottom age. So I had another year in the under, eight, under right. 18. So that's what I thought. Yeah. I, I don't know if 17 year olds can get drafted now, but um, yeah, I was clearly too young. Yeah, and immature, like, and you know, <laughs> and I was a dickhead when I probably still am. But you know, I was, I was very immature when I first started. Once again, I, I probably still am. But mate, I didn't deserve to be an AFL list. So I moved straight out of home. My first contract was thirty six thousand. Um, I spent every dollar I had as soon as I got it. <laughs> uh, moved in with my best mate. Mate, we're going out Thursday night, Friday night, playing in the reserve, reserve Saturday, then going out Saturday night, Sunday night. Mate, I thought playing AFL was all about getting drink cards and doing your best yeah. on a Saturday night. So. CQ back in the day, probably. No, nah, nah, CQ was I was a bit older, a bit more mature when CQ. Okay, right. I got, banned, I got banned from their venues. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I wasn't. I don't think I'd ever step foot in CQ, maybe once, but um, it was Spy Lounge in that back in the day. My, how old are you? Spy, I'm, I'm 28. Yeah, no, I'm thirty. Yeah, you probably wouldn't. It's a bit before me, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Spy Lounge was probably it was the first drink party venue I went to. Um, it was the same owners as like CQ and that. They just uh, nightclub okay. hopped around. Right, yeah, right, right. yeah. Um, but yeah, I forgot the question. What no, no. So it was, I was building in. So this is you've kind of answered it oh, though, because okay. I said the initial year. So you went pick fifty eight, two thousand and one. Yeah. But I didn't realise your first four years at Collingwood, you only played like thirty games. Yeah, so I played zero, then three, then thirteen, and sixteen, and the rest. But Mate, like I said, like I was a shithead. Um, I had put in, I put in no effort on the track. Put in a lot of effort off it. Yeah. Off the, I put in a lot of effort off the field at night, but yeah. nothing during the day. And and it's, this is as cliche as every footballer gets told. But you all think you're going to play forever and make good money. And yeah. thirty six thousand was a million, like a million bucks to me. Yeah. 
Um, you all think you're going to play forever. And I thought, if I can play in AFL, not that I was playing AFL, but I'm an AFL list, mate. I'm a rock star and I was a, at the very, very bottom of the totem poles of an, a, of an <laughs> AFL list, you know. So I was a shithead and I was just cruising along, just doing nothing. And then um, I guess the turning point was when, you know, we got arrested and um, got no got no blue. That was probably the turning point. No one wants to be in trouble with the law. And it's the only time. Is this year three, year four? Year two. Year so two it was. This okay. is the only, it's the only time I've ever been in trouble with the law apart from getting done drink driving. But yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know, that's, that's a different Slightly kettle of fish. More common, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I got arrested and then thought I was going to be sacked and they told me I was going to be sacked and me and my old man and manager went in and all the heavy hitters of the footy club were around and they sort of um, told me what they thought of me and obviously wasn't a very nice person back then because there wasn't too many positive affirmations coming back <laughs> my way and, you know, in the end they sort of, Mick sort of said, listen, we're not going to ruin your career, I might fuck up now. Prove to me that you belong here and I, I for God knows what reason they seen something in me that I could have been a decent player. Like I'd given no one any indication that I'd be good at anything, really? let alone football. And I was playing in the reserve reserves. So what was, <laughs> the thirds. Yeah, so I wasn't, I, wasn't even, I wasn't wasn't even good enough to play. And I was starting on the bench. I wasn't even good enough to play in our reserves. I had to play under them at 10 a.m. at Williamstown. I am freezing. So that is unbelievable. So I had to play down there. So I was giving no one any indication that I was going to be good at anything, let alone football. And obviously they seen something in me, God knows what, but... Um, from then on, I always say I wasn't put on the right path. I was put on a righter path than what I was yeah, on. Yeah. And I, I still had my moments, obviously. Had right up to the day I retired, I had my yeah. moments. But <laughs> So that was what, oh, end of 02. And I didn't get going to well, play until I've never, I never really felt safe, you know, until probably 07, wow, 08. six so, years in or so. Yeah, so, and they say, which rings true, it's harder to, to get fit than to stay fit mm. when you're playing AFL. So... Um, you know, trying to keep that base, and I just, well, I, you know, I hated working hard and hated training and and hated it all, and you know everything was too hard for me. But mm. then you know I had a couple of good mates at the footy club, were still two of my best mates this day, that, that forced me to to train with them and told me to put my head in, and um, and we still went out and enjoyed ourselves. After, don't get me wrong, but balance both. But when it was time to train, they fucking told me that I had to train. No, I was I'd finished well behind them in the running, but they'd come back and drag me along and. Get physically which abusive and physically, Fuck. yeah, which you probably couldn't do that now because who were they? Was that like Dids the and world? Ben Johnson? Uh, yeah, Ben Johnson and Chris Tarrant. Chris Tarrant, okay. Yeah, so how soft the world's gone these days. You yeah. probably you probably couldn't grab a kid by the <laughs> by the neck now and drag him along. Yeah, they'd probably complain. And Jeez, they must sacked. have seen something in you that if they're doing that. Yeah, well, I think. Well, you're a good bloke. I think why well, Jono and and Taz, we were obviously close, and you know the, the Rat Pack. It is what it is, but. Um, I think it showed that actually we, they cared for me as a person, not just so much. Oh, he's a bloke we can get out in the piss with and have a bender with. Like, yeah, yeah. They actually wanted me to succeed in life, not just like he's a bloke we can get out in the piss with. So they yeah. they dragged me along. Tazza in the weight room, forced me to to do weights with him and hated them. And if you know Ben Johnson, he hated doing weights, so he didn't do much in the weight room. He preferred lunch. Um, where, <laughs> but he he was an unbelievable, oh, great player. He's man. an unbelievable trainer. Like, was so, he really? Yeah, he trained really hard. So he forced me to run along with him and okay. in the running drills I'd have to stand next to him and you know I'd finish I'd lag behind but they showed me the work ethic that was needed and I was nowhere near that work ethic for years I, I probably never got to that work ethic yeah off on the track but um they showed me what I needed to do to be a professional footballer because it's it's not easy yeah well, this is why I was interested because the way you come across particularly from the outside when you're playing footy and like ha having been a professional athlete I'm like you can't achieve what you do just by like without some sort of hard work. And I feel like you would maybe fly under the radar with how hard you actually work. Like I recall an interview with Buck saying it might've been when you were leaving or something, but he said you were famous for like this run four six hundreds or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So were you actually like working harder than maybe what people perceived? Uh, yeah. Yes and no. Um, I think game day, I just had an insatiable appetite to be the best player on the field. Uh, I just, it's so a game was football. I just wanted to touch the ball as much as I could. And I had enormous pride in my performance and I hated losing. But for as much as you see me in a lock, I don't give a fuck and I'm relaxed. And yeah. But come game now, I hated I was hated playing badly. Like I remember days where when I was a, for, when I was a kid, I had five kicked on me and I was in the rooms like crying after because I had really? five kicked on me. I think I had a Muzaki five me in Melbourne, like um so like I hated 
not playing well. But um, the thing about Melbourne is of training. Once I got, I guess, set in the side or good enough yeah, where yeah. I've had a little bit of influence at the footy club, I Melbourne's obviously freezing. Yeah. So I hated, and because I didn't probably look after my body well on weekends and hated ice baths <laughs> and stuff like that. So like, I didn't look after my body the way a professional athletes should. But by, when we were training. Man, I'd run around with like my hand with a beanie on my hands in my pockets, <laughs> oh, and, and if the ball came to me, I'd boot it off the floor <laughs> because I couldn't warm up. So by the time I warmed up, we'd be finished. But where I and this is my mentality, I don't know. I always figured that I had decent enough touch, so I didn't need. And someone uh, you could someone out there's probably saying, "Well, he couldn't kick." Well, yeah, I probably couldn't kick, but. Um, you had lots of them. Though. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I said, if I needed 40 to make yeah. an impact, so that's what I needed <laughs> to do. Lots of kicks. Exactly. So, <laughs> I was like, the more I get, the more I can make an impact. So, um, so I was like, my touch and my, um, you know, my skill and stuff like that, I don't think I need to imp- – you can always improve on it, but that wasn't what I thought I needed to get myself right for the week. And what I needed to do was to do like, that repetitive running. So I'd, right. I'd like to stay in like the heat room, in the altitude room, in the like in the warmth where yeah. my body was a lot more freer and like just do you know sprints like ones twos threes fours five sixes for like you know 20 minutes half an hour just you know minute wow. minute on minute off 400 on 100 off whatever, whatever it was just for you know 20 30 minutes so I'd, that's what i felt i needed to do to get myself right so a lot of people and you being an ex-athlete you have you know, in your head, like little checklist you need to do to get yourself right for a weekend for yeah, you yeah, right yeah. to play. And that was, that was me. Yours. If I could, like, on a, I'd have to try on the main session sometimes, but like, you know, day before a game or whatever, I'd figure out, do a little bit of the warm, then come in and, and do the running. And for me, that was like, okay, that's the thing in my head. Well, well, all right, I can take, that's what I can take into game day. That's that, that kind of running. And that was the kind of run I was. I wasn't like steel or pendles. I can't I can't run at the same pace for yeah. my two K was was okay but it wasn't elite. Yeah. But it was the three hundreds and the interval running and the right. the short sharp stuff was where I um succeeded and that's I guess why the footy cup sort of revolved our midfield game plan around right. me our rotations and that's why I was I was the highest rotated player in the year in the league for like three years because I'd come on and off so much because you know I could go hard for four or five minutes, have two minutes spell, then I could keep up that same pace. So that's what I thought I needed to do to keep myself fit. The the training part and like right, sitting out training sitting someone like just running through a, a kicking drill. Yeah. I thought to me that's useless. Yeah. Like I mate, obviously once you're a young kid you you have to sort of impress but once I got good enough to be able to have a influence and have some say like me doing triangle kicking, I was like, <laughs> like what is the point it's of gonna this? It's going to do more detriment exactly. to what's doing, what's doing, What's doing quick hands off, you know, doing hands with yeah, someone on yeah. the side? It's, for me, it did nothing. I'd rather go in, just do 20 minutes, half an hour, punish myself, and yeah. then that's it. Maybe do a bit of boxing. Just just that, keep off my feet, and then, then we'd go on to the next week. And I guess the, I thought I had one effort in me a week. That's probably, you know... A, Probably different roles, but I was like, I just saved all my like the day before, two days before, I wouldn't leave the house. Yeah, go to training. I sit on the couch, just hydrate, eat, and I thought I had one effort in me a weekend, hard. and that's I just bust mass and give everything I possibly had on the Saturday and, and probably on the Saturday night, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. probably maybe a little yeah. bit on this into the Fo- Sunday. Full on effect, exactly. Right? Yeah. But then, then I'd be be body be fucked for three days yeah. because I wouldn't look after myself after a game. But I'd do some running. Warm up and then I think all right, I'll one effort in me a, a week. So game day come out and give it all I had and and that's pretty much how I looked at life. I was very all or nothing. I love that. I love that. One of the things you mentioned before was the term the rat pack. Mm. Like, how did that originate? Was that more the media than sort yeah. of you guys? Like, it was the media. To we, I think they were trying to like knock us down a couple of pegs or take the piss out of us, but <laughs> it, peg, it, it put you up. Yeah, <laughs> mate. Well, it's a term of endearment. Well, <laughs> uh, so what happened? I was thinking. Obviously, um, a few of us had a few indiscretions off the field, you know, ranging from little things to to big things. And yeah. um, I think it was Sherrod Wellingham actually who, oh, who the um, tack, the, what was it, the driving? Yeah, so he got done drink drive. He lost a, moon, it was moon, a big sponsorship, he lost a million dollar tax sponsorship or something That's like that. Right. So um, he lost that for, for 
for reversing five meters or so. He tells us, <laughs> but, um, yeah, just pulling the car into his driveway or something like that. But um, so he got done for that, and then so on the Monday or the Tuesday, front page of the Herald Sun. I'm pretty sure it was. It was Collingwood's Rat Pack, and it had like photos of actual rats with all their heads superimposed on them, like and it, like had you know like Ben Johnson. You're kidding. Nah, so. Um, Who so was in it? Was it you, Ben yeah, Johnson, Dida? Yeah. Um, I think Sharrod, obviously. Not that he's <laughs> Sharrod. All, 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 the, all the fuck ups who uh, <laughs> happened. There was so, a few in that. Yeah, there was a few, mate. They needed a double page <laughs> spread. Um, but yeah, so that happened. And then I don't know how it stuck, but it, it has. Um, and like, we think of it as in terms of endearment. I think maybe a couple of reasons why it stuck is because we weren't just clogging up the list. Like a couple of us were at times, but um, the thing about the Rat Pack was, you know, on game day, if it was halfway through the last quarter, it was usually one of the Rat Pack that would stand up and do something. That's what I was going to say. So in the pressure moments, yeah, that's so what I was like. Exactly. you got Heath Shaw who'd do something big off halfback. Ben Johnson would step someone and kick a big goal. Chris Tarrant obviously do what Chris does. Deeds would kick a big goal. I'd do something in the midfield. So there was... I think that's why... Half the reason why, because we actually... And Collingwood, you know, blue collar, you know, hardworking suburb. We were hard working on the field and, and we obviously worked pretty hard off it. And um, I think the other reason was we, and we still don't, didn't see ourselves better than anyone else. Yeah. And we were just normal kids, 25 year olds to whatever, doing whatever 20, other 25 year, old, 25 year olds were doing. We just happened to be on the MCG playing in front of 80,000. So we'd go out, man, we. Well, I said, we never thought we'd burn anyway. So we'd have, if people want to have a beer, we'd have a beer, relax, have yeah. a good time, say hello. And I think that kind of endeared us to the to the Collingwood people. Yes, we were obviously pretty good players. You know, we've got, you know, seven or eight All-Australians between us. I've got five of them. <laughs> but, but, I love um, that. Yeah, share a brown load together. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. An MVP. <laughs> share, many, share many things. But um, I think, yeah, ones that we were – we probably – put in game down I think people could see that effort it wasn't just like oh he's just a fuckhead just drinking yeah. piss and carrying on and he doesn't actually perform on game day we actually worked our ass off on game day and the other thing was we we are just normal kids Blokes, from the suburbs yeah. doing exactly what every other kid from the suburb was doing we just happened to be playing on the MCG on Saturday so it's stuck and like if I go speak of footy clubs and that like every, every nine out of ten clubs a group of kids will come up and go we're this club's rap pack. So, which, which is awesome. So <laughs> right, it's, it's a sure, brand. Exactly. I'm not sure if it's the legacy I wanted to leave, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but that's awesome. Like it's, it's fun. Like, well, we had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves, we worked hard on and off the field. Yeah. We caused, and caused trouble. We, we never caused trouble. Yeah. But you we, just we your got into trouble on our own. Yeah. In AFL's rules, which yeah. is, yeah. you know, different to the rules of society. Correct. So, but yeah, they're, they're great. We're still really close mates. We catch up. We haven't obviously caught up much because yeah, of COVID, of but um, yeah, I was with Tazza on the weekend, um, with Jono the weekend before. So yeah, we're still really close, and um, yeah, I'm very proud to be a part of the Rat Pack. Yeah, mate, I'm look, I'm I'm an outsider right now. I feel like <laughs> I'm in it, but um, did it did that ever help you like your performance being put in that light, even like playing under Mick or whatever to give you? Because I feel like if you didn't play as well, you would get a heightened sort of <coughs> scrutiny because you were deemed in that sort of Rat Pack. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, you know, and I think the thing with Mick was he knew what we needed to to get ourselves up for a game. So if it was, you know, everyone, you know, not drinking on a six day break, so rules like that, or not drinking when injured, and it was for us, wasn't all about drinking. Like sometimes we didn't want to do weights. Yeah, a bit sore, I can't be fucked on weights. I want to sit in the lunch room and just <laughs> eat and go home, and you know, just my body's a bit sore. You know, so Mick had kind of for the senior blokes who sort of the senior sort of ten twelve. You know, you turn a blind eye every now and go, oh, mate, just go home. Or yeah. don't worry about waste today. Don't worry about trying. Go home. Really? Yeah. Or, That's amazing. Yeah, mate, if you have a drink, oh, well, you're a dickhead, but don't worry about it. But as long as you performed. So that brought your brownie points. Yeah, but it's, it was only as long as you performed. So right. like, if you had a bad, if you had one or two bad ones in a row, I can guarantee you'd be doing weights and you'd be doing extra. Yeah. Or you, mate, you'd be making sure you are in the ice bath. Or you'd be making sure you are doing this, you are doing this. So he sort of empowered us and trusted us that we knew what we needed to get ourselves right. But... Like I said, once if you didn't play well, might you'd be you'd know about it and you'd make sure. And he wouldn't even have to tell you that you had to do it. You just you go well. I'll, I'll shit out on the weekend. I'm not gonna sort of you know 
piss in his face and just yeah. like just take the piss again. Yeah. I'm gonna actually fucking work. I'm gonna do everything right this way and do extras and until I get my form back and then we'll go again. But but playing at Collingwood and the the I guess the bigger the the profile I got, you're under the lights no matter what. You had a bad one, you're on the back page saying what's wrong with Swan. Yeah, 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 if yeah. you if you played well, you know that you're on the back page saying he's, he's best. world's best. So <laughs> you know the okay, you know but I think Buck said something which is very you know is real at Collingwood when you know when you're on the back page the best uh, it's never as good as what they say it is mm. and it's never as bad as what they say it is you yeah. know what I mean so like, they could come out on the back on the front page and you're the world's worst but it's internally it's not as bad as that like yeah. everything gets magnified at Collingwood yeah like everything like um, you do the slightest thing wrong you're on the back page. Um, someone at a lesser club does the exact same thing wrong. Don't even doesn't know. even get mentioned. So it's true. But that's like I wouldn't have changed it for the world because that's I love playing in Collingwood. I love playing in front of eighty thousand. I love playing Anzac Day. I love playing, having the pressure of performing at a big club. I have no doubt if I didn't play Collingwood, I wouldn't be sitting here today with the things I've done, the things I've been able to do, the people I've been able to meet, the networking I've done. Um, you know how I've been able to use my image. Yeah. So. The um, yeah, being in Collingwood is is a very double edged sword. But if you use it right, it can be amazing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you have to be able to navigate it and use it right. And yes, you got to learn from your mistakes. You can't keep fucking up and fucking up and fucking because eventually you are you will be the world's worst and you'll be gone. So you got to learn from your mistakes. And I think we all love people with a little bit of edge, like yeah. not just that straight cookie cutter. Correct. Gives us you know you watch the news and I could give half the responses and I'm. It's boring to, though, eh? Exactly. So I think we all love people with who are not different, who are just themselves. Yeah. And whether you're a cookie cutter on your own and that's just you or you're a bit different. Because like, there's so many players that I play with that have got unbelievable personalities, so funny, yeah. like so quirky, different. Like if they just were themselves to the cameras. It'd fucking be awesome. Exactly, their profile would go berserk and they would, you know, they if they wanted to, they could make, you know, a career off it or being in the media or they could, you know, have more fucking followers on if yeah, Instagram yeah. if that's what they wanted. Yeah. They could be so, you know, different. But it's a it's a fickle world because the we car- media and that carry on about people giving the same answers. But as soon as someone doesn't give the same answer, yeah, everyone jumps on them and says, yeah. "Oh my god, I can't believe he said that yeah, about Rich. I can't believe he said this. Wait till they play each other." So it's, <laughs> it's madness. But um, it's it's the world we live in. Do you reckon that stuff goes on now in sort of the new age of footy in regards to like when you're saying like Mick, you know, Swanee's had 38 on the weekend. He's not feeling the weights today. Just let him have the day. Do you reckon that stuff happens now? Or do you reckon it's kind uh, of changed? It's a bit more old school. I'd be very surprised. But I think it should. If you've got... I think the older senior blokes... The younger blokes who are still forming... Are finding their path should have to do everything. But like if Scott Pendlebury doesn't want to have to do weights... <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Easy. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if he's a bit sore on a Monday, he should be able to go home. or should be able to do this. Yeah. So, But then I would imagine they'd be saying, well, he's setting it... What kind of example is he setting yeah, for the kids? So, <laughs> But... I think if you've got a strong enough culture at a football club and you've got strong enough personalities and leaders in there, like if you've had the career of Scott Penelope, if the young kids are going, well, why is he going home? Well, mm. well, the young kid's got no idea. Like, yeah, yeah, after you play 350 games and you win seven best and fairest and you're yeah. eight-time All-Australian, well, then maybe yeah. you can have a fucking Monday so a fucking off. Oath. Exactly. So I think that makes the kids want to strive for that too. Like, there's exactly. a bit of a... There's a carrot there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you get that good. Well, yeah. you can you have a little bit of leeway. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's the world is... Footy's different. The world is different. Um, but um, social media is a huge part of it. Um, it's, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's it's a wild. It's wild. I feel sorry for the boys that are coming in, but then I don't feel sorry for them because you look at their pay packets and you're like, well, okay, well that's yeah. going alright. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but they earn they earn every cent they earn every cent they get. They work hard. They, they absolutely do. So I don't know if you know, but I go for St Kilda. Okay. Yeah. So. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Well, no, I'm not sorry no, about no, that. Mate, I just, I'd just be lying. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> no, uh, well, look, it was partly my fault. Oh, I look I at did, the red, I, white, I and black. Play. You did, yeah, no, yeah. and played well. But um, just on that, like 2010 we're talking about, obviously probably like the most historic grand finals, maybe not the second one for some. But, well, it was um, for me. Yeah. yeah. But did you guys internally, because relatively pretty young side, which is kind of like yeah. had this edge about calling it itself. Like you guys, not that you didn't give a fuck, but you weren't listening to anyone else. And I feel like you guys... Some people feel they have to wait for a window. They have to get to a certain point in their career. You guys didn't seem to give a shit about that. Did you guys think internally you could be as good as you were that year or go uh, all the way? Yeah, uh, not early on, but I think Geelong and St Kilda were the two best. They yeah, played in the 09, Grand the year before. Yeah. 09, yeah. So 
I think we might have got beat by one of them early in the year, but then we beat them both in the back half of the year. Right. And that's when we realised, okay, Game on. we're good enough to, to, to beat anyone. And then we um, then we flogged Geelong in the prelim. It's probably the best, you know, quarter of football I've been involved in. So when the Collingwood chance started, I think we kicked, you know, eight, nine, ten goals in the first quarter. I doubt they scored. And that was in the prelim. Or the first, it was one of the finals. And then uh, that's when we knew. I think it was the prelim. And then it's the, we knew, like, righto. Like ours is this is ours to lose, and we we obviously nearly did. Fuck, we nearly mate. fucked it up. What was that like? The draw? What was it? Did you just feel fucked yeah. after it? Like, did you? Yeah, yeah. It was it was so weird. Um, I when I speak about it, I was like, I feel no different to the hundred thousand that were there, all the millions, whoever was watching. Like, it was just, <laughs> uh, I was like, what? It's yeah. just silence. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, half the boys were like, bring it in. Like five minutes each yeah. way, and. And half the boys have obviously <laughs> collapsed on the floor because they knew we were coming back the next yeah. week. So. Nick's Mac, Nick Maxwell tend to terminate on the bloody media. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. holy shit. We, we, well, listen, we, they've done the right thing. We should, you should have to play five minutes each way. Yeah. Um, and In like, hindsight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> while, while we played, the so I was lucky. We are biased. We obviously won the next week. If I had a loss the next week, geez, I would have kicked up a stink sandwich. Yeah. Would five that minutes. happen now, though? Do you reckon? Now, Is that what they the do? Rules have changed. So, so, so five minutes each way. And I think more importantly for... For um for the fans, like so, because grand final tickets aren't cheap, and not many people get them cost price. So like, everyone gets on sold, and yeah. you know, so he's paying five hundred thousand bucks a ticket. Who you know, Collingwood St Kilda blue collar clubs who work, you know, their people work hard all year. And yeah, they want to splash out and watch their team play. They have to stump up again to another five hundred thousand bucks, whatever. Lot. It's a lot of money. So either you come back next week, and everyone who was there gets it, gets their same seat back. Because mate. We made, you know, 30, 40K off it for coming back the next week. That's so we, so it was fine with us, but um, it was very, very unfair on, on the fans who are the game and they put their hard earn in um, who has deserved to, to yeah. get it in free ticket. But they did the right thing. Now it's five minutes each way. More exciting for the fans. And yeah, coming back, awesome. come back next week was a pain in the ass. But um, you, to win a flag, like obviously I've only got one, so it's, uh, it's a story to tell. Yeah. What was that? Obviously, winning the flag was a huge moment. I feel like uh, probably a lot of people were playing the grand final that week because they were probably still exhausted from the draw. But you yeah. guys just came out and destroyed St Kilda in a sense. <laughs> yeah. What was the um, what was the aftermath like for that? Like you, uh, the after the winning one? Yeah, just the winning one. Like were you guys just exhausted? Were you partying for a month? Yeah. Like what yeah. was uh, still? That's why we never won another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just finished last Thursday. Yeah. Um, but the the. the the other thing with that is like, um, I'll tell you probably the the best moment of, of winning the flag. But whether you finish on the bottom and don't win a game all year, or you win the premiership, the, the celebrations or commiserations are, are pretty much the same. It's just you're just a lot happier when you win the flag. Like, Understood. There's only so much you can drink. Yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean. So <laughs> like, you, you, you still kids, kids are in a better mood. Not like you can fucking drink a lot yeah. more or party any harder. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So. The Mad Monday still goes on. Silly Sunday still happens. So it's not so much did we party hard. Well, yeah, if we didn't win a game all year, we still fucking had a big crack as soon mm. as the season ended. Absolutely. So it's not so much about, yeah, we, we partied for a month because you kind of always did that. It was more um, just just little moments after the game, you know, when we went back out, when the MCG was f- just the cleaners were cleaning up, just seagulls, yeah. <coughs> just us, the 22, went out in the middle of the ground, linked arms, oh. <coughs> and just like, went around one by one, what you know, a word or a sentence that meant something to us. And we sang the song, um, you know, in the middle of the ground, MCG, just quiet, deadly quiet, just us singing the song about two, three hours after the game. That was probably the most the most memorable part for winning the flag because after, once you get in the rooms, you win it. There's a million people in there. Still people going ape shit, grabbing a beer, you're carrying on. And then obviously everyone pisses off and you go, and then we would just ask for it for 45 minutes. And then obviously the chaos starts with the parties yeah. and, you know, silly mad Mondays and all that kind of thing. So um, to answer your question, yeah, we obviously had a, a fair crack, but it's kind of no different. It's just, you're just a lot happier. You've got a, a metal yeah. ring in there. Yeah, but okay. um, the, the prop, why I think winning a, a flag is so special, because I don't, I don't wake up every morning going, I'm a premiership player. Like it would have changed my life if we had a loss. Probably not. Maybe yeah. every time I fuck up and I'm in the paper or something, it says premiership player <laughs> yeah, next to it. So that's probably all. Or people ask me about it. So yeah. But I don't wake up every morning and say, geez, how lucky am I to win a premiership? Like I, in fact, never really talk about it unless really? I'm getting asked. Like yeah. it's just, I, mean, I was 10 years, 11 years ago, yeah, you know. Crazy. So it's not something I think about. But the 
why I know winning a, a premiership is super important is the catch up you have every year. Mm. Well, you've got that bond, so we'll be tied together forever. So we catch up. Obviously, haven't been able to do the last couple of years, but and we've missed our ten year reunion. So I hope hopefully we'll have a you know eleven year reunion. But um, you catch up once a year. You know the the same the twenty two twenty three go the the staff and you know the coach trainers the same people getting together and we have a long lunch the game goes on you know the same people get shit hang on them like the same jokes get told you know the <laughs> same people sit together yeah and it's like we're 25 again that's man and like that's awesome. you leave you leave that lunch a couple of days later and you and you realize um how important it is to, to win a flag because yeah. it's it's those moments where you, you know you get in the uber on the way and go fuck, thank fuck that we, was awesome. we got one done because we're going to be bonded forever together. So that that's that's the moment when you realise how important when a premiership is because well, we won the flag right. I went to Ireland, played in the Australian series, come back. So I didn't really get we didn't really have a lot of because we had the draw. We didn't get a lot of time to really celebrate together. We all pissed off overseas. Mm. I'll get back day one of pre season. Like we're win the flag, I'm thinking there's going to be a barbecue and beers set up. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? We've just won the flag. Day one of pre-season, you walk in, haven't done a thing, you're like, fuck, where, is the, where are the beers and barbecue? Like, <laughs> mate, we've won the flag. We've, we've, won, we've won the flag. Like, and they sit you down and go, righto, everyone's coming for you. Fucking, you know, you're the best. Everyone's coming. We've got to train harder. We've got to train oh, longer. Shit. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so, got to train harder and longer. Yeah, Someone else was going to throw a party for us. <laughs> so, we used to do take 2K time trials. So, Right, instead of doing a 2K time trial, we're doing a 3K time trial. Oh. Nearly fell off my seat. Jesus. Because like, all what I used to do, I'd just make sure I could run a 2K without stopping. Yeah, like yeah. in the off-season, I'd yeah, get yeah. on a train and just run 2K. So you so get I, through it. So I knew I could do the 2K without stopping. That extra K. 3K, I was like, no, I'm not doing this. I pulled it out with an injury. So <laughs> I said, there's no fucking way I'm running 3K. So oh, no, my so God. I got out. But like, so my point is just like, when you're actually playing in the league, you don't have time. Just like Melbourne now. Yeah. They'll be back in pre-season. They won't be having part. Well, if they are, they're very lucky. But they won't be like hanging the hats on last year. They yeah, won't be straight kicking back it. in the spa going, "Fuck, how good are we?" Like we're like coaches and that are, are bred and inborn just to go right. Oh, we got to train harder. They're coming for you. everyone's coming for us. We got to make sure we're harder and fitter and stronger than last year. We got to be better. Everyone's got to improve that little bit because so winning a flag while you're playing, it's good initially, but it just goes away. Yeah. It's just, so it's just after you retire when you understand how important winning a flag is. That's amazing, man. Uh, the bond will, will last forever, no doubt. <clears throat> One thing for me, if I had to guess, like I'm going to say individual accolades, probably not important to you, but <clears throat> you won so many. So yeah. did you ever, were they ever actually important to you? Do you like, uh, did you ever strive for them? Like <coughs> well, Brownlow, five all Australians, like fuck. Important because you got bonuses at the end of the year. <laughs> so. There we go. That's your carrot. So, well, yeah, exactly. Everyone can, you know, Everyone bullshits to say they're good, but uh, most people have bonuses, so that's why they're great, but not really. <coughs> um, well, Brownlow same as the Premiership, but I think winning a Brownlow gives you some kind of status, I guess, like in the AFL circle where you might be able to do a function or... Did you uh, win it the year after the Granny, yeah, was it? Yeah, should have won it in the year, but, you know. Um, <laughs> Duh, Jules, who's yeah. bitter about that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, but no, I don't like. Well, once again, I don't wake up thinking I'm Brownlow Mellis. Just one of those like things. I like, would. Yeah, yeah well, you can have it if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So no, the individual accolades are nice, and yeah, maybe when my son's a bit older, I'll show him all and show him how good I was. But um, but but no, they're they're nice to have along the way, and you're nice to be recognised by your peers or by the media or by mm. and whoever judges all Australians and and the umpires and stuff like that. But maybe they're just individual awards. If I wanted individual awards, I would have played tennis or, yeah, you know, I would have played yeah, individual golf, sport. So, yeah. you know, I, I played team sport. I love football to share success with my teammates. And <clears throat> we have a catch-up every year for winning the premiership. We do not have a catch-up every year for me winning the Brownlow. Yeah, that's exactly I've right. sent out invites, but no one. <laughs> yeah, no I'll one's, come. No one's, I'll, no one's turned up I'll yet. Come, so mate. it's a lonely, I'll come. I'll it's a lonely that. lunch. That's awesome. Um, for you, given you, we spoke before, you're doing quite a lot of shit i wouldn't say you got a day job but you've got so yeah. many things going on when you came out of footy into retirement for you was that a bit of relief or were you were you um, at a point where you were like fuck i don't know what to do now i've yeah. been so used to playing that for so long well i played 15 years 16 years whatever so i think once i was i hurt my foot so that's right um i think once you get to 32 you've played if you don't have some kind of idea of, of what you're doing well yeah. 
you're either a moron or <laughs> you've got a very rich family. Yeah. Or you've made a lot of, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was ready. <coughs> like I got offered a contract, so I Buck sat me down and offered, and offered me a contract, and because you forced out with your foot, <coughs> weren't you? Yeah, so I'd have, yeah, so I'd have, have fought and we weren't going great. If I, if I thought we, if I knew we we're going to make finals or have a crack at a flag, I probably would have hung on. Yeah, but well, I just don't. I didn't think my foot would survive. Yeah, um, and I didn't want to be a player who was running around and the fans going, fuck, he should have given it up last year. Yeah, You know, they say, um, die a hero, I'll live long enough to become the villain. You know, I was kind of like, <laughs> wanted to go out and say, Swanee Sue should be yeah. there instead of like playing, a ho- doing a whole season, a whole preseason, and getting to the f- in the six games in and go, my foot just can't handle yeah. it. Or um, So I just, and I, bought, you know, Buck said, said, listen, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to come back early, you know, no... No preseason, no off season. You have to come back early. You know, you're gonna have to work harder than you've ever worked. More diligent in your rehab. It'd be the toughest year. And I, I said, well, I just, I don't have it in me. I yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah Sometimes so it's better they say, why did you than why don't you? Exactly. Uh, you know? So, and now, and yeah. So that that was pretty much it. But I was ready. I was ready for the next phase of my life. Yeah. Um, you know, 32. I always, I always wanted to travel. And I'm probably lucky I did what I did because, um, what a few years later and. We couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I, you know, I had a kick with Dale Thomas this morning and he retired and he hasn't been able to travel the world. You know what I mean? That's what he planned on going away for six months. So, <coughs> you know, we travelled for 18 months out of probably two years when we finished. I did That's Celebrity amazing. Jungle. Um, did all, did you know, bucket list scenes, Coachella, the World Cup in Russia, European summer, Heaven. you know, NBA, NBA NFL. Uh, ticked off some amazing things, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I was still playing. Looking back, that making that kind of money is very, very hard to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I, I was jumped at the chance to get out of footy, and, and I love playing footy. I'll be doing it for free if it wasn't good enough to be able to play it as a, you know, a professional. Yeah. Looking back, could I have held on two or three years? You know, it's that's a lot of money. It's hard hard to make these days. Yeah. Um, now, if I'm just doing it for money, do I enjoy it as much? Who knows? But um, it's just a lot of those what ifs, like. Um, yeah. But I don't live with regrets, so I'm very happy the decisions are made. Got some unbelievable memories from the the five years I've been finished, and um, yeah, it's brought me here today, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, before we go into just the final segment, which is just a bit of a fanfare question, yep. I do want to just give a plug to the Bowler Kit. Like, mm. how can we can we get a bit of background on this? Because I know you, <laughs> Harlan's obviously been yeah. around with it for a long time, but you've recently come in as like a partner. Or yeah, something, so, so come in a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago now. Um, yeah. My my dates have so. Confused with COVID, man. Yeah, like all just, over the place. <coughs> yeah, I know it's been the quickest two two years of my life, or longest yeah. with this baby as well. But I'm not sure. But but yeah, so I've always had an interest in fashion and stuff. Lad and Harles obviously had Bella Apparel for you know Bella Clava. That's what it's where it originated. That's where he's from. The the suburb. Yep. Um, some people say Bella. It's, it's Bella, but fucking who cares? Say what? Call, what, call it what it, you want. Just exactly. Buy it, guys. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he and me and him were were doing weights. During COVID, and, um, legally of course, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, garage weights, yeah, and we're just talking, and I was giving some input and stuff like that about where I thought the brand should head and what he should do, and he said, "Do you want to come? In? Do you want to come on?" So I was like, "Fuck, Fuck yeah. it, I'm doing nothing else." So that's probably um, I enjoy it. Uh, it's an it's a creative outlet which I don't have a lot of. It's great gear, man. Yeah, so, honestly, it is. So I don't. So it's it's fun. I, I enjoy it. It's a, it's a nice creative outlet for for me to get out and try and. Uh, Use another part of my brain, which um, yeah. it doesn't get used a lot. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's cool. Bellapparel dot com. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, we'll so, put yeah, that in the fun. description okay. for um Thanks, for everyone. Yeah, make sure you get some bowler kit. Harlan dropped off a tea, mate. They are good. There's hoodies. There's I track never pants. Know that. Thanks, Harlan. Yeah, <laughs> I know. There we go. Oh, it's hard uh, man to get older. <laughs> yeah, he is. Except unless unless you call someone Dwayne, maybe you'll pick up the phone. Exactly. But um, all right, we're gonna go into the uh, lace them up quick fire five. Now this is a bit of a fanfare segment. Five questions, yep. instinctive <laughs> answers. Yep. Pretty straightforward. I think you'll get it. All right, player that you love playing with the most. I will. I can't split Ben and Chris. Ben and Chris Tarrant, beautiful. Hardest opponent to play against. I've always wanted to know that from you. The hardest? Well, <coughs> that, that depends. Um, so you know, I played on guys like Ablett and Judd, yeah. but you know, it's, I'd say they you can map, I'd say Ablett's probably the greatest midfielder ever played. You could say Judd's top three. If, yeah. Um, but when you played on those guys, both getting the footy. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't hard per se. It was yeah. like it's Matt start on a stoppage and obviously unbelievable star stars, but once the ball spread, 
they weren't following you. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. And I wasn't following them. <laughs> so yeah. like we'd have, you know, that I'd pro- we'd have both have thirty each. So that wasn't hard. But if we got our ass kicked, it was hard in the review on the Monday because they'd be like. Why are you 50 minutes away from Chris Judd? He's a pretty good player. Well, well, yeah. I fucking thought the ball was going over there. So yeah. I was trying to get it. Um, but probably the, the player who had probably had the biggest effect on me was, was probably Cameron Link. He really? Got me, he got me in the granny um, in 2011. Um, he was probably my toughest opponent. When when Geelong were at their best, he was at their best. Yeah. And I was at my best. So he was the so, captain. So, okay. so so probably him. Hey, good answer. Um, this was an interesting one. Chirpiest or best on-field banter? It could be a player you played with or played against who, uh, who was good on the lip. Did, Alan Dydak. Really? Yeah, he was very good. You got any that you can remember that you can say? Are they all a yeah. bit fit out of the yeah, stratosphere? Uh, <laughs> no, I've got a couple of good ones, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We'll the, keep. They should need to be recorded but, <laughs> yeah. um, forever. But uh, but Ditch was very good um, from Collingwood. Heath was also... Yeah, he looks he, like he'd he'd He didn't shut up. He's, he's ADD and stuff like that. He's, um, he'd go mad on the field. Um, I wouldn't even know what he was saying half the time. But, uh, but yeah, Dids and Heath were, were one, two. They were hilarious during the footy club. Mate, they'd make you cry so much. Oh, oh brilliant. Uh, best part about being an AFL footballer? <laughs> oh, well, uh, there's <laughs> quite a lot. For all the whinging and moaning that I did, um, like I'm under no illusion that playing AFL was the best job I'll ever have. Like, yeah. you know, you fit, healthy, you make good money, you know, you have, you know, 12 weeks a year to travel the world. Um, if you want it, you can use your profile for... All kinds of things, drink cards. Um, <laughs> That's all we got to exactly. do. Exactly. Uh, but the best thing for me, apart from being able to set myself up yeah. for, you know, not for life, I obviously have to work, but like give myself an unbelievable, my family, unbelievable head start in life with the money. Um, yeah. Just the thrill of playing in front of 80,000. No, uh, yeah, the, that's ridiculous. You can't, can't compare. Yeah, exactly. You can have high paying jobs, you can go to the gym, you can be fit, you can, I, can, I don't know, you can do all the things, but can't you, can, you cannot run out on Anzac Day in front of 100,000 people and and play. Well, you just, you cannot, you can't, you literally can't buy that experience. Yeah, um, well, you can't pay to go out and play an AFL game. So so the thrill of uh, running out in, in front of 80,000 fans, that that's... That's the best thing about playing This might NFL. follow on from, from that answer, but this is a bit one for, for the more for the Pies fans. But I was going to say, favourite aspect about playing for Collingwood. I mean, their <coughs> fan base is obviously insane. Yeah, like the, yeah being the biggest and best club, definitely. Yeah. Um, it comes, like I said it before, it's a double-edged sword and it comes with, um, you know, some risks. But like if you if you treat Collingwood well and their fans, like they'll love you back, yeah. you know, just as much. and. Listen, I thought I did that. I thought I always gave time to them. I still do. Um, so, yeah, the the love. And I, so I'm sure they fucking pounded me when I was kicking the ball out of the floor. <laughs> yeah, they would be. Exactly. They'd be the when, first And, and when I was turning over. But <coughs> Both ways. But, oh, but I love that about I think, you know, I think that's people pay their good money. And footy is such a stress reliever for people who actually work hard during the week and, yeah. you know, don't have much. And, you know, they work paycheck to paycheck. They want to go to the footy and it's their outlet. They want to boo me, or they want to call me a fuckwit, or they want to yell at me, or they go your hardest. It's your your you pay the membership. I have no problems with it, um, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure they bag me. But the fans were were awesome to me. They always were. Now I'm sure some some hate me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> can't please them all. But exactly. But ninety percent of them have always been unbelievable to me, and um, I would not. I have no doubt I would not be here without their yeah. love and support. So um, yeah. So definitely them and and Ed and just yeah. the. Just the grandness of Collingwood is is something it's that's crazy. It's something that's very very hard to to tell people yeah. about unless you can walk in there and, and understand how big it is. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up here now. Apparently, you got a bit of an amazing palate. You did some food reviews in lockdown yeah. and famous on your Instagram. Yeah, well, so yeah, that's our board. <laughs> we're um, gonna we're gonna bite into some okay. burgers here at uh, Royal Stacks. I haven't eaten today. So yeah, yeah, we've got some coming, so we're gonna give them a rating out of ten. Okay. Couple of burgers, couple of sides. Well, I'm gonna have to be biased, aren't they? Cause, <laughs> yeah, cause that's what I thought exa- as well. Exactly. I so. thought, fuck, mate, they're giving us free food. Yeah. We're in the podcast booth. They got everything's gonna be seven plus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Especially if the owners are there, it's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> be it's gonna be hard not to give a ten. So yeah. I might have to give a sne- sneaky one on the way out. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a nice one. But I'm I'm sure they actually look pretty good. It so fucking I'm, does. It yeah, does, this place is packed. Um, yeah, mate. Thanks for coming no, on. Right, Appreciate it, mate. Awesome. So easy. Beauty. <laughs>